hey what is up guys this is me again Ayub from the webdev cave i am back with new series new videos new concepts and yeah before i dive into the uh the topic of this video i just want to say that i'm really sorry i got some messages and the some comments of my videos uh asking me to create more videos and i'm really sorry i haven't uploaded any video since my last one uh it's been more than a year actually so anyway i'm back now and hopefully i'll be making a new video every week so yeah all right then um so the topic of this video is web services and before i start let me give you an overview of what i'll be talking about uh, in this video i'm going to give first a brief history about web services don't worry this is not a history class it's just some information that you'll need to understand web services easily and have the proper mental model of it next we'll talk about why we need web services and then we'll explain what are web services exactly we'll talk about how they work we'll give some examples and and finally i'll tell you what you need to know to start using web services effectively so web services huh uh, before I give you a brief overview of the history of web services, I'll give you something that I want you to keep in mind while listening to me. Web services are a set of technologies and rules that enable two or more components on the web to talk to each other. Now, you don't have to decipher this definition or know what it means exactly, just keep it in mind, okay? Let me repeat it. Web services are a set of technologies and rules that enable two or more components on the web to talk to each other. And by components, I mean anything that exists on the web. Anything that could operate on the web is a component, all right? A web server is a component. Uh, a web browser is a component. Basically, any web program is a component, okay? So yeah, now let's talk about the first web service. The first web service used WSDL, which stands for Web Services Description Language, which is actually the rules part in the previous definition, and SOAP, which stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. It's the technologies part. SOAP uses XML and HTTP as the communication technologies. Now, let me show you something. This is an illustration of the first web service, and understanding this illustration is very important to understanding what is coming, okay? So pay close attention. Let's start by the component spot we talked about earlier. Here, the components are the service provider and the service consumer. Think of the client-server model on the web, okay? And these, the service provider and service consumer could be anything, as we said before. See, web services were created to solve the communication part in distributed programming. Before I continue explaining this illustration, let me talk a little bit about distributed programming. And it's very important to understand in web services. In distributed programming, the end software or the end system is a set of interlinked components or modules or, as we will see later, services that are located in different computers and communicate with each other through some protocol. The protocol here is SOAP, okay? SOAP, which we'll be calling later a web service, is what makes it possible for these components to interoperate and communicate with each other, okay? This web service is language or platform agnostic. What does this mean is that these modules or these components can be built with any programming language or exist in any platform and they can still communicate with each other easily to achieve a certain functionality or goal in general so now let's go back to our illustration so as we said before the two components are the service provider and the service consumer and just to clarify a service provider is the module or the component that does the functionality we need, okay? And the service consumer is the module or component that asks for it, okay? Just to make things clear. The third part of this illustration is the registry part, which is a place where rules of communication exist. See, in the past, organizations that used, that used distributed programming on the web or on the web or on any other network used to create their own web services with their own set of rules, okay? And whenever a service consumer wants to communicate with a service provider, the service consumer needs first to consult the registry and ask for the rules that it needs to properly communicate with the service provider. And the illustration explains this very well. So in the first step, the service provider uh, 
create a set of rules and store them in the registry and says, hey, anyone who wants to talk to me, just give them these rules. After that, whenever a component or a service consumer wants to talk to a service provider or better yet, consume a service, it needs first to consult the registry and asks for the rules that it needs to properly communicate with the service provider as shown in the second and third steps. And finally, after the service consumer gets the rules, it, it sends a request to the service provider in a form of XML message. The service provider receives the request, analyzes it, does something and sends back a response. And that's it. Now, I really don't know if I explained that very well and do you now have a clear idea of the this first web service? But if, you, if this still sounds overwhelming and you're still wondering what the heck is a web service and what is all of this? I promise by the end of this video, you'll have all the necessary pieces to complete the picture. So let's proceed. All right, now let's talk about why we need web services. When I was talking about the first web service, I kind of gave you some hints and information about why and how the first web service came to exist. Well, that's only half of the answer. Remember distributed programming? the need to make distributed system components to talk to each other and interoperate? Well, that's only half of the answer. Now, more than ever before, the web is a very big and complex world that many complex software systems live in. So because there are so many software systems on the web, many of which are based on distributed programming, and this is growing by the way, web services are needed more than ever before. Those systems need to talk to each other to do their job and to give a better user experience. And of course, now with cloud computing, we'll see a lot of distributed systems and systems and systems that are based on service-oriented architecture. And of course, web services will play an important role in this. So it's like web services are like the glue that holds everything together in the web, okay? Let me give you an example to make this clearer. One example is that if you ever used a web app before that has the sign up and login features, say like um, Evernote, for those who don't know it, it's a note taking app on the web, okay? So this platform lets you create a new account and log in using your Google account. And that's not magic, that's just, well, web services. Here is how it goes. You first go to the Evernote platform and you click the sign up button and then Evernote shows you a very nice Google sign up button and you're like, thank God I don't have to type in my name and the password and confirm and all the painful process. And you just click the Google sign up button. What will happen? after that is that the Evernote platform sends a message thanks to web services to a program in the Google server which is can you tell well the service provider and says hey someone wants to create an account using his Google info can you please send me his name and profile picture and some other stuff and then a small window pops up it's Google asking you to allow ordinary request and I'm sure you have seen something like this before this is the service provider asking you whether you want to allow or deny request and this is because Google wants to make sure that this is not a hacker or something that could do some kind of malicious action so yeah then you hit allow and after seconds you start typing your first note so yeah now let's talk about what are web services exactly and you may be saying if now you are going to talk about what are web services what the heck were you talking about before well i hope what i talked about before will make it easy to really build the proper mental model of web services so in this section i just wanted to put everything we talked about together and and give you a clear and concise uh definition of what a web service is so a web service is nothing but a connection technology that allows two or more components also known as services to interoperate so web services are the bridge between components on the web each of these components uh, which are actually just programs these components or these programs do things that other programs need okay whether it's some kind of computation, fetching a database, executing scripts, on anything that can be achieved with programming. So yeah, let's talk about how they work. Now, the model I showed you before of the first web service, this model is, is no longer used. Okay, with the advancement and the advent of new technologies, it turned out that this model is, is not efficient and new models are used.
and a lot of efforts are being made to standardize one kind of web services and that's important because this allows for easier exchange of data and a significant reduction of development and maintenance time and every service on the web can talk to any other service easily one kind of these web services is uh, rest web services now most of the organizations adopt and use restful services and my next video will be on restful services so stay tuned how they work it depends on the web service okay what i will talk about here is what they have in common so the first thing we should know about web services is that they harness the power of http they use http to handle the communication part so web services allow two systems to talk to each other by sending http messages just just a regular HTTP communication. I'll show you a link in the video to a video I made about HTTP and how it works. The second thing that they have in common is that they all have to have an agreed upon data format that they will be using to talk to each other. Okay, here is a simple illustration of how this happens. So we have the service provider and service consumer and the exchange of messages think of the http as the envelope and this http envelope will contain the message that is written in the data format that the service provider and, and service consumer agreed upon if you remember in the first web service the data format was xml and another thing to note here is that both the service provider and service consumer have the ability to parse the messages and extract meaning from them now before i finish let me tell you what you need to know to build either service providers or service consumers which are also called clients and what you really should know to to use web services effectively first you need to have a solid understanding of the http protocol and now http2 http2 has a lot of great capabilities and it will certainly bring about great change in web services and the web in general next you should be familiar with data exchange formats and the most used ones which are xml and json you should know how they work how you send and receive messages using them and how to parse them of course another important thing is you should try to know about the rest specification okay the rest rules because most of the communications over the web follow the rest rules one last thing i want to recommend is a really promising technology which is called graphql graphql is a very powerful technology it replaces some things in in the traditional REST services and some developers actually call GraphQL REST 2.0 so yeah with these technologies and skills in your toolbox you will be able to build pretty amazing stuff and that concludes it we've talked about a lot of stuff um, i really hope i didn't disappoint you and and if you have any suggestion or anything or you just want to say hey or something please comment below and please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned